Are we alone in the universe? Recently declassified communications and videos are giving us an unprecedented look into how the government handles these sightings, but there is no definitive answer to the question. No matter how much grainy footage is released, we still don't know what might be in our skies. In 1979, Paul Benowitz was trying to solve this timeless question. He was living in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and working as a scientist. On the cool and clear desert nights, he began seeing mysterious lights in the sky. He was living near the Kirtland Air Force Base and right across from the Monsanto Storage Area, the U.S.'s largest nuclear storage facility. To him, the location of these nighttime visitors was not a coincidence. He began filming the lights in the sky. Subsequent theories state that Benowitz was probably seeing the first ever tests of unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs. Whatever he was filming, theories say the government needed him to stop. Benowitz was undeterred. In the years that followed, Benowitz would discover one of the biggest conspiracies in ufologist circles. The more Benowitz discovered, the farther he spiraled down into a dark and inescapable place. Was Paul Benevitz mad, or did he find something that was never meant to be found? The story goes that Benevitz had somehow accidentally tapped into an encoded communications line at the Kirtland base. He was receiving genuine coded messages. He was sure that the messages were extraterrestrial in origin. Benowitz soon received a top-secret communication. He never divulged where it came from, but it told him that there was a secret underground base in Dulce, New Mexico. In the halls of ufology, Dulce Base is a very real and very dangerous place. An underground joint base shared by extraterrestrials and the U.S. military. It's home to inhumane and cruel human experimentation. In the years since Benowitz's discovery, many people have come forward to claim that they have been in the Dulce base. Theories say Benowitz was being misdirected. His focus on Dulce pulled his attention away from Kirtland. Many believe that Air Force counterintelligence officer Richard Doty was the man who fed Benowitz the information about Dulce. Many believe that after Benowitz discovered the encoded communications at Kirtland, that Doty was put on him to make sure he believed he was dealing with aliens. It would have been a huge blow to Cold War America if Benowitz started leaking legitimate state secrets. It was much easier to just let Doty push Benowitz further into his alien theories. In 1988, Benowitz wrote a paper called Project Beta. It detailed how exactly to go about attacking and exposing Dulce Base. He took this information to the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization, who brushed him off as a delusional paranoid. From 1979 through 2003, the alien visitations to Benowitz became more frequent and intense. He reported seeing orbs of light in his home. He repeatedly complained of daytime alien flybys. He would produce strange wounds on his body and claim that he was being injected in his sleep by aliens. None of the evidence has ever been corroborated by trusted witnesses. Benowitz couldn't handle the stress. He wasn't eating. He wasn't sleeping. Every day had become a fight for survival against an enemy that most people didn't even believe existed. Benowitz was committed to a mental institution no less than three times before 2003. He began correspondence with Krista Telton, 
an alleged alien abductee who believed her child was of half-alien ancestry. Her conversations with Benowitz and other alleged eyewitnesses were published in her book, The Benowitz Papers. This book claims that Dulce was very real. One witness stated it was his job to wrangle staff that wandered into the alien-run areas of the base. Whether or not Benowitz's deteriorating mental state was caused by clandestine government operations is still up for debate. We're stuck with many different theories. Some have gone full in on the government angle. They claim that agents went so far as to install artificial above-ground vents in Dulce to reinforce the idea that there was a massive base underneath the town. Some claim that everything that Benowitz found out about aliens is true and that the government had no hand in it. UFOlogist William Moore has admitted that during this time period he was trying to push Benowitz into a mental breakdown by feeding him false information. Doty has also publicly stated that he fed incendiary information to Benowitz, but that he was not specifically singled out. He states that he was instructed by his higher-ups in the military to infiltrate gatherings of ufologists to spread false and misleading information. In 2003, after years of stress and pressure, Benowitz broke. June 23rd, he took his own life. Or did he? The life and even death of Paul Benowitz is shrouded in mystery. For every confirmed detail we have about his life, we have 10 to 20 theories. Some claim that Benowitz is still alive today, being held in Dulce Base, the place he helped expose to the ufologist community. What do you think? Was Paul Benowitz a victim of aliens or a clandestine government operation? It's really up to you to decide. You can follow me on Instagram at ThreadTheUnsolved or on Twitter, at Dread Unsolved. You can also find me on Facebook. Do you have a mystery I should look into? Email your tips to theunsolved at dreadcentral.com. Thanks for watching.